everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Sports Talk on my TV 26. I'm Jimmy Manese. Jay Frieda. So, Jay, we're going to get started right now. We've been ignoring it for the past couple weeks because of baseball playoffs and football and such. But uh, the NBA is starting to take root and take hold. We're mm-hmm. starting to know who's starting to be the teams to beat, who's not the teams to beat at this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, predictably in the West, are you surprised that the Clippers are standing at 10-1 and right now? I am. But it's all about the competition they play played so far. They haven't really played the Warriors yet. So, oh, you know, so yeah. that, that's well, going to be a loss. <laughs> well, well, the Warriors are 8-2 at this point. And, um, yeah. it, find, it seems like the last couple of games they finally started to play as a team, how we kind of anticipated them to play. Yeah. But, uh, well, it's, it, still, it's still a defense gap. I think right now they still got to learn how to play with each other. And they're still trying to figure out good rotations to get in for the second guys to come in because they did lose a lot of defense. Uh, the last game, Durant had an unbelievable block on the dunk against uh, Phoenix. That ended up being a three-pointer for Steph the other way. So, I mean, they're starting to figure it out. They just got to figure out rotations. I think they need more for Clay Thompson. He had a, a, a hurtful couple first games, you know, and the three-point shooting. But I think they're getting together. But as Clippers, yeah, I'm surprised the Clippers are 10-1. One. But they're doing good. They well, were supposed to be the super team. There's also the rumor, too, that Clay Thompson might get traded fairly soon. Uh, one of the rumors out there is that he's going to be going to Boston. Well, that's actually uh, – well, that, that was from a reporter who actually wrote something saying that if they gave up Clay, they could get three guys from uh, Boston that are defensive guys and, and, get, picks. and get some picks. But – I don't think they're going to give. They got the big four. Why give that up? They got the guys who make it happen. I mean, they're have, they have, they still eight and two. They're still second in the West. I mean, why even shake anything up? So it's not panic time is what you're saying. No, uh, never that. I mean, I, I see Clay, Clay, Draymond, and, and Curry the long term. Yeah, they got the ramp, but that's only a two-year deal with a one-year option. So it might not even last past a year. We have to see how it goes. I mean, those guys are the future to keep the Warriors a top franchise. And uh, are you surprised to see that the Spurs without Tim Duncan are, are still in the mix at 8-3 and three at this point? Oh, never. I mean, after the first game, you, you can see that they're still the same team just as good. I mean, against the Warriors, actually not having them would actually help them because he was too slow and really they play against uh, the Warriors that much last year because they're too much of an up-and-down-the-court fast-break team anyway. So, but, you know, Duncan's still going to be around, you know, uh, educating people and mentoring anyway. At this so. point in the season in the West, do you think the best player coming out of there in the West is probably Kwame Leonard at this point? Uh, for their team? Well, just in general. Uh, yeah, I think Leonard's doing really good. Um, but I still don't think he got that element like a LeBron James who can win it all for his team. He needs a team to, you know, to do good. Um, he, I mean, he's a heck of a defender. He, he, but. He's so good that they don't miss that Tim Duncan isn't there. They're not missing that. Well, they're not Anthony, missing Tim Duncan there. Tony there, Parker's getting old. They're not missing Tim Duncan there because they got uh, Powell in the middle now. You know, and they, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and they got another big guy. So, I mean, they, they filled up the holes, and they still got good coaching. At the end of the day, they got one of the best coaches in pop ever. So, And, and, and on the Eastern side, uh, are, are you surprised to see that the Hawks and the Raptors are both 7-2 and two and are trailing the Cavaliers for best record in the East? I was surprised that the Hawks is there. I mean, I, I already knew the Raptors was going to be there because they signed both of their key players from last year. So they pretty much brought back the same team, even though one of them talking about they might leave at the end of the year. But I, I knew they would be good. The Hawks, yeah, I'm surprised that the Hawks, you know, getting it together and uh, is definitely doing good. Well, the but, league's finally found out that Paul Millsap is probably one of the, the bigger bangers in the league. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's Not still hurtful. Not hype, but just in yeah. What he well, it's still hurtful on the East, just because that's still who's who's going to challenge the Cavs for real. <laughs> and, and that's that's essentially what the question comes down at this point. Uh, do you see that it's going to be? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you predict at the end of the year that it's going to be the Hawks and Raptors in the mix, or do you think it's going to be you know the Pacers are going to be in there? Do you think you're going to see you know maybe? You know, maybe um, another team that's coming out like you know. Yeah, I, I think there's other teams that gotta get together. I mean, I'm surprised. Anybody, but not I'm surprised Sixers. Boston is not so high. You know, uh, I'm I'm surprised that you know the Pacers is it, is it uh, more win, but they're right behind them as well. So I mean, I, I I don't see the Hawks being there. I do see the Raptors being there. I think the Raptors will be there. Um, I want to see what happens in in uh, New York and Chicago because they got teams put together that. Got players, even though New York haven't figured it out yet. But I thought Chicago would be doing better, you know, being that they brought in a couple of key players. But you know, are, are you see. surprised that the Knicks are nowhere near the top of that list, considering that all 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 that they did to go and bring in Derrick Rose and yeah. to keep Carmelo Anthony happy? And I mean, I'm I'm surprised I'm surprised they they don't got more wins. But the way they're looking over there, like they need a lot of more um, time together because Rose was there for the whole preseason dealing with the court issue. And he's looking better than he have 
the last couple of years in Chicago, you know. So. Over or under, Derrick Rose is out for the year at the torn ACL by the All-Star break. <laughs> I think he makes it, man. <laughs> you think he plays a whole I think, year? I think he makes it the whole year. <laughs> okay. You know, if he do get out, I don't think it'll be ACL. It'll probably be something else. <laughs> Sam Bradford <laughs> says he's made out of glass. <laughs> so, uh, I, I get, we'll change gears right now to football. Uh, locally, uh, the 49ers are traveling to New England to pay the Patriots at Gillette Stadium. Uh, do you have any predictions for that game? Um, do you have anything to say other than just say your prayers and eat your vitamins and train real hard, 49ers? Uh, yeah, um, they probably will get washed off the board. I mean, it's not going to be much there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a tough league. Do you, do you think they, Colin Kaepernick could continue to have another solid game and give merit to the idea that, you know, he, he, he deserves to be a quarterback in the NFL? I mean, I think, he's showing that he would, aside. I think he's showing that he was the better quarterback definitely there. I mean... He's doing more than Gabbert was, but they still have the same defense and the same offensive line. So <laughs> yeah. it's not like he's going to be a miracle worker, you know, but I think he's looking better than Gabbert did. Uh, you know? I noticed that they're a tad more competitive in the games. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of the things I've noticed, too, about the 49ers is uh, that uh, it seems like Chip Kelly is able to kind of put more of an emphasis on defense, knowing that the offense that he wants to run is kind of being handled properly. Is that... Yeah. I, I think what you do see is the offense is actually staying on the field longer. They give the defense some time to rest. Because in the first couple of games with Gabriel, it was like they were off so quick that well, the defense I, was I playing so much. I just meant the idea to where the offense is actually on the field for a few minutes. They're actually able to put some points on the board so mm-hmm. that it's not, Make hey. kind of competitive. Right. The game plan doesn't go out the window on the third drive of the game. And but it's do, you just, think, <laughs> do you think any of that is going to matter against New England? I, I think uh, Tom the Brady. The is going to be like. I think Tom Brady has four touchdowns and uh, Legarrette Blunt rushes for a hundred yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, yeah if game. you're a fantasy player, this is definitely the week to play Brady and Blunt. That's for sure. <laughs> right. and, and probably and even Gronk. and Edelman <laughs> and uh, what the hell, Chris Hogan too. <laughs> that guy. They got the other tight end over there. That's really oh, good. Oh, Martellus Bennett. Yes. Bennett. Uh, yeah, both. I mean, that tight end game is lovely. You know, and it, it makes me think back to no the guy Johnny. who got the murder. <laughs> the, well, the guy who got that murder case a couple of years back, who uh, could have been the other tight end with Grunk. That, that oh, he could have uh, been, he yeah, could have been that. Aaron with, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. He could have been that with you know or they Aaron could have Hernandez. Had, Hernandez. Sorry. They they could have had those things going a long time ago because it's for some reason the England is a good tight end team. Like no one uses the tight end like New England does. Well, it, it, and again, it all comes down to coaching and Bill Belichick and realizing right that place. if you have two six foot six guys, that there's no slot cornerback or linebacker on earth that'll cover these, yeah. both of these guys. And um, the, you know, this is a different league. They actually get you know because they're not the fastest guys, but since they do get the you know the the run down the field and they'll get touched too much nowadays. Because I remember you know. 10, 20 years ago, you was a tight end, man. You was getting beat up going down the right. field. Well, a guy my size <laughs> trying to cover somebody of LeBron's size. I mean, it, it, nah. you just look at the matchup, and it seems to make sense. And uh, there are a lot of teams that employ that tactic. I mean, Tony Gonzalez was the first one to really do it. Mm-hmm. But you saw New Orleans was doing it with Colby Fleener and Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham's doing it now in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you see what... It's a good scheme. It's, it's all about where you put your pieces. And if you can get the smaller guy on your tight end in some kind of switch, or if they play man, if you can get it out there, then... You know, it definitely works good. I mean, the guy is nothing but body, like target. You can't miss that. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, um, over under in this game, uh, New England wins by two touchdowns. Oh, definitely over. <laughs> right I think on. three to four. <laughs> right on. Do, you, do you think Chip Kelly comes back with a job? Do you think it's going to be that bad? I, I don't see Chip going, you know, past this year, but you never know what the 49ers want to do. At least probably give him another year. I mean, on Chip's defense, they don't have a line. They don't have defense. I mean, it would be pretty hard for any coach to win with that team. That is a fair point to be made. Um, also, switching gears to the AFC, for the first time in three years, the Raiders are on Monday night football, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, because they're actually winning and got the best record. Playing the Houston Texans, who uh, are looking like trash. Uh, do you think our boys are going to look good on national TV and win by 45,000 million trillion points? I think I think we definitely need some uh, TV time. I think it's going to be good. I think they're going to show out. You know, it's, it's Monday night. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the day to play. Do you, you know? think that this is the night that the casual fan finds out how great Derek Carr really is? I think I think fans from the other side of the United States is going to see some more Raiders because you know they'll get no time. You well, know we, we predi- see the games, but they don't. So we were I think, predicting I a big game from Tom Brady, but I'm predicting an equally big game from Derek Carr against Houston. Yeah, I agree with you. I, th- I think he he could definitely put it down. I think it's going to be a good running game too. 
Because that, that defense on the run is hurting over there, too. Yeah, so. especially since there's no J.J. Watt. Yeah, they don't got Watt no more. You know, they got another uh, linebacker that's yeah. filling in now that's kind of right. new. Ryan so Cushing's yeah. missing in action. They still right. have Vince Wolfworth, but hey. Yeah, I think I think they'll get some running. I think the screen game will be good. I think the receivers got a good matchup. You know, I think uh, they'll, they'll definitely pull out another win. I mean, they got hard division, though. That's a hard division with KC doing good this year. The Broncos still doing good. I mean... They still fighting, man. They have to have this kind of season to have a chance. I, I think that that actually, I think that that is actually one of the nice things that keeps the Raiders playing because team culture aside, if they're winning the division by two or three games, this is when you would see them take the foot off of the pedal. This is when you see them blow a big lead. Yeah, whereas, I don't think with that coach. Whereas, I, I think with that coach, he'd never go take the foot off the pedal. I think that's right. You know, I think it's a new, it's a new, it's a new you know, whole uh, vibe over there. I think he got them really playing hard because you understand that you got to keep going tough to get into the playoffs. Once you're in the playoffs, everything else don't matter. And if you're not on that same momentum, you're going to get killed. Which, uh, which rate of running back would you start in this game if you were playing fantasy? Would you go to Murray? Would you go to Washington? Would you go to Jalen Richard? Definitely not Jalen Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll probably go with Murray. I think he's going to get the, the bulk of the carries. I think he's going to do the most damage. I think there's going to be a lot of reds on offense. And, and, and I think if they get close to goal line, he's the man to push it in to really get you fancy points for touchdowns. Right. I, I, so. Plus, I think that the Raiders are going to spend a lot of time in this game in the red zone just because yeah. Houston's offense is uh, on the borderline side of this side of trash. So, mm -hmm. um, And uh, not only that, but uh, also we're, we're going to get kind of – Delusional Raider fan here, but uh, I think that if they win this game, that this is this is going to be a statement game, and they're going to yeah. come out. And not only is Jack Del Rio going to try and win by forty or fifty points, and not only is he going to try and make the numbers look great for Derek Carr, I think this is also going to be one of those games that they're going to try and say to the Chiefs and the Broncos, "Hey, this is our division, and you got to come get it from us." Yeah, uh, you know they already beat the Broncos. Like I, I told my Raiders buddies, you they have to beat. You have to beat the They've Broncos. Already beat them all yeah, you have to division, beat the Broncos so. to win it. So you think they got the division locked up? Uh, I think that if they're able to win this game right now and have a two lead, two game lead over Denver, uh, and be tied with Kansas City, assuming that Kansas City does win, I think that they'll, I think they're fine. Okay. I think they're in great shape. Well, they definitely got one of the hardest divisions of football. That 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 that's easily the case. Uh, I mean, on that side, they definitely I mean, got. Even when the Chargers are the back end of your division and they're still not that bad. Then you know mm. you're you know you're in a good division. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's until, not like it's, until Rivers throw four interceptions. Yeah, it's not in the like they're quarter. in the NFC South where you know four and five is cutting it for division lead, which it seems. Well, like I mean, it, they're definitely about the division of the AFC, and then the NFC. You got the NFC East. Uh, every team is over five hundred right now. So, right. I mean, the, for the two sides, they're definitely the divisions to be. You got the A and one guys on one side, and then they all were seven to two up right. and down. So. It's gonna be a good. Uh, year. Are, are you insinuating that there could be a Cowboys Raiders Super Bowl? Yeah, that would that would be nice. Uh, I I think it could happen. I but think the NFL I, I would like that a lot. I would think the Cowboys going to the playoffs. I think the NFL think would like that them. a lot. Oh, yeah, it would definitely <laughs> be a money maker. Uh, also, interesting note. I don't think we we touched on a uh, games in Mexico City, right? Yeah, the first one, the first Monday night prime time in Mexico City. Over and under, how many uh, ten people die? <laughs> Over, just leaving the stadium. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it's exciting because uh, there's talk of the NFL trying to expand to either London or to Mexico City. Do you think that this is one of those games, uh, especially being the Raiders and you know they're. Um, the demographic of their fan base, I guess we'll say casually. Uh, do you think that this is going to be one of those games where the NFL might say, like, forget trying to send Raiders to Vegas. Let's just send them. Let's just send them to Mexico City. Mm, nah, I think if anywhere they're going to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> going to I, Vegas. I don't see. I don't see people really going to Mexico City just because coming in and out of Mexico City. Those there's only there's only two million people that live there. Why why would you want to put a football team? Yeah, but because Vegas, <laughs> I got two million new people coming into town every day. I, I bet you Roger Goodell is scared to death of what would happen in Vegas with those athletes and <laughs> those bankrolls, <laughs> 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 the Raiders' reputation. I mean, if anything, just the uh, the All Star Game in Vegas for the NBA has to uh, <laughs> show what kind of. Man, the All Star trouble. was awesome. I went to a Vegas All Star game. That was, man, packed. Yeah. Yeah. Do that again. <laughs> I don't know where they had it last year, but bring it back. Bring that back to Vegas. <laughs> 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 That's right my on. vote. So uh, we talked about a couple of the games, the local games. We're going to shoot it out to our East Coast correspondent, cases. Well, he's going to give us a rundown of some of the other games. So take it away, Ken. Hmm. 
Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? Welcome to another edition of Sports Talk on my TV26. Hey, first of all, I want to give a quick shout out to our GM, Mr. Gennaro Frida, who just had his first grandbaby. It's off the chain. It's off the chain. He's 36 years old, his son is 18 years old, and now the baby is a little baby. And, it, and it's cool to see. And, and the baby's name is Gennaro Frida the third. So congratulations, Jay. We appreciate everything that you're doing for us over here my TV26 and all the underground stuff that's going on for the TV station throughout the community. It's a very good thing. You guys need to, to stay tuned and, and stay involved with the with the my TV26. And um, so obviously this is sports talk and I'm gonna cover some football games. That's what we do over here on, on sports talk. We talk sports. It is now week what is it, 12, week 11, something like that, of the, of the, of the NFL season. And we're going to start things off in D.C. or Maryland, where the 4-5 and five Packers come in to play the 5-3-1 and one Washington Redskins. Now everybody's talking about Aaron Rodgers and what's going on with the Packers. Now Aaron Rodgers has 22 touchdowns, 7 interceptions on the season. 22 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and people are saying, what's wrong with Aaron Rodgers? That just goes to show you how great of a career this young man has had throughout since, since he became the starting quarterback of, of, the, of the Packers. And, I, and I, can, I can honestly tell you, you can't put everything on one person. You, you just can't. I mean, the, the, the Packers are just struggling. They can't run the ball, and, they, and, and, and they're struggling on, on their pass defense. I, but on, on, the, on the plus side on the Packers, they are fourth in the league in rushing defense. So that is going to play a role in this particular game because the Washington Redskins are struggling to find themselves a rushing identity. And luckily for them, a kid by the name of Rob, John, Rob Kelly has come out of nowhere and he's now averaging almost five yards of carry since, he, since he's taken over the, the uh the rushing duties for the Redskins and Kirk Cousins he, he's having himself probably the, the best year of, of his career he's got 14 touchdowns only seven interceptions but he's got the Redskins on a winning formula right now and hopefully since I'm a Redskins fan I'm hoping that we can take care of business at home and I'm looking forward for the ball to go to, to Jamison Crowder who's become a new rising star for us on a team that has a lot of star players Jamison Crowder is, he, he's got a very good upside to him. All right, so here we go. I, I got the Redskins to win this thing at home. Next game here, we got the 4-5 and five Buffalo Bills coming into Cincinnati to play the 3-5-1 and one Bengals. Now, the, the, the Bills, they, they, they're they second in the league in, in, in total rushing. LeSean McCoy is, is leading that, that that attack. And the Bengals are struggling on, on the defensive rushing side. They, they give up almost 117 yards a game on the ground. So I'm thinking this particular game right here is going to come down to the rushing attack. Now, of course, the Bengals, they got Andy Dalton and, and A.J. Green. They're going to be able to throw the ball. But can they stop the run is the question in this ball game. I don't think they can do it. I got the Bills to win this thing on the road. Next game here, we got another tough ball game. We got the 5-5 five and five Titans coming into Indianapolis to play the 4-5 and five Colts. It's a game of Marcus Mariota versus Andrew Luck, two star quarterbacks in, in the league. I'm, I'm going to just go with the with the better team. I just, I just feel like the Titans are the better team. All, all around. I'm, I'm talking about all around. And I, I, I think they're sixth, they're sixth uh, um, in the league offense is going to be better than the Colts' 30th ranked defense. I, I, got the, I got the Titans to win this thing on, on the road in a tough ball game. All right, then we got the 4-5 and five Bucks versus the 7-2 and two Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Kansas City, they're hard to beat. The Chiefs, they're hard to beat in Kansas City. They just are. And, and, and defensively, they only give up 19 points a game. But this young Bucks team, I don't know. They started out the year very slow, just like they did last year. And now they're starting to win ball games. I'm, I'm going to take the Chiefs to win this thing at home, but it's going to be a lot tougher than what people think. Jamison Winston, he, uh, James Winston he, he is just... 
he's going to be an elite quarterback. That's, that's all I that's all I can say about that. All right, next game here we got the four four and one Cardinals. Coming in to Minnesota to play the five and four Vikings. Both teams are struggling right now. Carson Palmer for the Cardinals. He's got 11 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Personally, I want to see the Cardinals give the ball to David Johnson a little bit more. Obviously, Carson Palmer is not at the peak of his career like he was, say, five years ago, even even three years ago. He's on the downside of his career. Might as well give it to the young back. Let him do his thing. And as far as the Vikings, they're, they're a streaky, streaky ball club. They start out the season, obviously, 5-0. and They're now 5-4. and Sam Bradford, he's playing decent, but they still do not have the running game and they don't have that second and third option at receiver behind behind uh, Stephon Diggs. They, they just don't, they're just too inconsistent. I got the Cardinals won this thing on the road, especially if they get the ball to David Johnson. Next game here we got the Patriots, the 7-2 versus the 1-8 49ers. I just threw this game in there. The Patriots are gonna win this game, but I want Colin Kaepernick to have himself a good ball game. I want the 49ers to at least show up, which I think they will. I want them to show up, run the football, let let the 49ers know you're not just tanking the season, even though you're 1-8 already. But I'm looking forward to Colin Kaepernick. I hope he does well. But I got the Patriots to win this game. Next game here, we got the 4-5 Eagles coming into Seattle to play the 6-2-1 Seahawks. Carson Wentz, I, he's playing out of control. I mean, he's doing great. Rookie quarterback in the NFL. It's tough to win a, a road game in Seattle. Especially after that, that that come from behind victory that they had against the Patriots. I got the Seahawks to win this thing at home. It's going to be tough, but I got the Seahawks to win this thing. Next game here, we got the 6-3 Texans versus 7-2 Raiders. No, I didn't think the Texans would be 6-3 at this point. I just didn't. I really looked at them as, as being like a 3-7 and seven or 3-8 and eight team right now or whatever. I didn't think they are going to have a winning record at this point in the season, but I still don't think they're going to win this ball game in Oakland. The Raiders are too good. I got the Raiders to win this thing at home. Alright, man. So for the rest of you guys, uh, thank you guys for tuning tune in to Sports Talk My TV 26. I'm Kenneth Campbell, a.k.a. K. Sizzle. Back to you guys in the studio, man. Holla. So uh, that's our show for this week, everybody. My name is Jimmy Manese. Jay Frieda. Uh, tune in to us next week. Uh, also find us on Facebook at Sports Talk on MyTV26. Uh, feel free to submit any questions, anything of the sort, uh, if you want to correspond with us. Or even come and be a guest on the show, because uh, if you know about hockey, you know a lot more about hockey than we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> well, once again, Jimmy Manese. Jay Frieda. See you guys next week. Thanks a lot, everybody.
Yeah. He was holding that one for a while. I seen it. <laughs> cool. So I, I was hoping we would run out of tape. Now we're coming back from commercial, and uh, we're talking about that stuff. And um, are you coming back from commercial or your fantasy? We're going to go to fantasy minute, then we're going to come back and talk about that stuff and that stuff, huh? Uh, yeah. Can you grab that piece of paper, please? Uh, the bottom half, oh. I believe, is the one that you're going to need. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Might put it over the orange one. Uh, just stick it on there. Yeah, put it over the orange one. Yeah, that's cool. Let me make sure the camera's still the same. Oh. Yeah, same. All right. I just, it just back. Okay, cool. Okay. So we're coming back from commercial right here, right? Yeah. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, so, Jay, it's been a pretty busy week in the NFL, especially fantasy-wise. Um, mm -hmm. Biggest news, I guess, is a uh, former starting running back for the Seattle Seahawks, Christine Michaels, waved today. Waved. Just was, straight, just straight surprised. thanks for the seven starts, you're done. Yeah, and he, and he had like 600 and something yards this season. I know I had him in my starting uh, fantasy for a I couple of I played him leagues. a couple weeks ago in one of my leagues. I mean, I yeah. he, he was a startable running back. It's very surprising. But it's, it's because Procise, his name? C yes. CJ Procise, been doing awesome. So, I mean, he... Procisely. He, precisely. <laughs> this guy, he, he's been captain out of the backfield. I mean, he's he been doing good running. I, I don't see him as a runner like Michael, like up the gut to get those two right. yards because that was a couple of plays. Well, they've got Thomas Rawls coming back who last year when Marshawn Lynch was injured filled in really well. Yeah. Um, but at the same if he time, stay healthy. Uh, but at the same time, the kind of identity of this offense has changed a lot this year. It used to be Russell Wilson. It used to be a lot of Marshawn Lynch, and now it's kind of looking like it's you know, Jermaine Curse, Jimmy Graham's getting in the mix. You're, you're talking about passing to the yeah. running back out of the backfield. It's, to Seattle. I mean, it's, it's good. It's good to see Graham in the mix, and then. Uh, pro size coming out the back for the way he went up the seam la last week and caught on the sideline was, you know, the man. You know, well, so. well, do you think it, I think what it does is it shows how the Seattle's a versatile offense. They can be an offense that needs to stack up, stand up, stay in the pocket, and go with a big running back like Thomas Rawls. Mm -hmm. Or they can go and be one of those quick, fast offenses that's got the scrambling running back that's dumping a pass off to your quick running back with the tall wide receivers and the big tight end. Uh, the big question is, Is do you think that they can get it together and start playing well enough to actually be a legitimate Super Bowl contender? I mean, the way they played last week, uh, definitely. I mean, they just took out New England. So, I mean, if they if they can play on that level and keep that, you know, the balance like that going, I think they could uh, mess with anybody if you could take out New England. Uh, it's just about, it starts with defense. You know, if that defense stay up and they'll turn the ball over, I think they're all right. Cool. Where do you think Christine Michael ends up? Because this is the NFL. He's gonna he's gonna end up somewhere in a couple of weeks. Where do you think he's? I, I'm predicting Green Bay. That's Green just what I'm throwing out there. Nah, I say the Lions. Okay, Green Bay, <laughs> yeah, NFC North at some point. We'll, 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 we'll review the tape in a few weeks and see which one. So, if either of us. Are so right. do you go with some locker room thing or something like that? Because why? I mean, because I, I read that they still have an open spot on their roster. Yeah, like, they didn't pick up anybody. They haven't promoted anybody from. Yeah, the, so. I, I really just, couldn't tell you. I don't know. Um, he wasn't good enough to bench. He 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 fumbled in one of the games. One of his last games he played. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, maybe maybe Pete Carroll found out he's got some dirt about USC. I really I don't, don't know. know what's going on. You know on what's there. sad is they actually the team that drafted him. Yes. So this is actually his second time Ch at the second, radio. Yes, his second chance with the mm -hmm. team. Uh, and uh, it's a total shock to me. I would have thought at least with Thomas Rawls coming back that Christine Michael would have just. Fit in somewhere. It would, would have at least been like the third down blocking back or something, some sort of special teams player. But apparently he can't even fit those needs. I guess precise was precisely uh, what they wanted. Right. Uh, also coming up, uh, speaking of, Alshon Jeffrey, stud wide receiver out of Chicago. Guess it turns out he's a stud receiver because he's on the juice. On the juice. Four game suspension. That's right. And actually he's saying it's not the juice. He had an inflamed limb and he took a medical Something, substance. Yeah, that, that wasn't had, cleared. Uh, Right. That's what they always say. <coughs> right. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, that they're saying Cameron Meredith is going to be the next guy out Dude, there. Does it, does it really matter in Chicago? I don't know. Uh, Eddie Royal. Was they, was they doing anything anyway? I don't know. Yeah, we don't even want to talk about Eddie Royal. <laughs> I had to get rid of him on a couple of my fantasy leagues. 
Uh, that man Eddie, was doing nothing. Eddie royally doing nothing. Yes, yeah. exactly. With with either quarterback though, like you couldn't get open for either one. Right. I can right. see the ones that they like you, but the other one they even use you either. Right. Right. Um, and, and also uh, talk about um, you know things hurting like this. Uh, RG three banged up. Uh, was injured. He's starting to play again. He's practicing. He's going to practice. He, gonna practice. They're talking about he might mm-hmm. be playing again in a couple of weeks. Uh, do you think that there's even a shred of hope that he gets on the field this year? Do you think the Browns are just going to say, like, you know what, we're the Browns. Why risk hurting this guy again? I mean, you haven't won a game, so why not? And he, he, he better do something if he goes to keep playing over there. I think they got to put him on just to see if he comes back, see if he does anything. You don't want to be like the Redskins who sat him down for a whole year just to see him come back and get hurt two games in or something. <laughs> right, right. I mean, if you're paying them, you might as well use them. What else you got to lose? Another game? <laughs> or, uh, yeah. Do you think they go in 0-16? Oh, in I think they got a good shot. They Every week really, it seems like they really, they really got a shot at they it. They got, they got a game against Jacksonville. They, they <laughs> really want that. They really want that first draft pick. Yeah, but yeah. even Jacksonville looks like. Well, no, I mean, I'm just saying they have a game against Jacksonville. That's probably their best bet. Yeah, that's about the only bet. And uh-huh. I think they lose that one too. And, I uh, think they got that number one pick stone up. Over under when RG three comes back, Terrell Pryor suddenly becomes a stud elite wide receiver. Under. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think you see less of the ball, and he demands to be the quarterback. All right. And uh, going, sticking with this, injury notes, uh, Sammy Coates has been placed on ER, broken fingers. Man. He was a slot receiver out there in Pittsburgh. Um, he had the lacerated hand where he cut the webbing in his hand, and he had stitches. Mm-hmm. Turns out, I guess, those hands, the hand was also broken, which would explain why he leads the NFL and drops. Um, interesting enough, though, he's been getting played in 45% of fantasy leagues, even with the broken hand. So, um oh, man. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, we'll play this week. Right. That's right. Yeah, he's probably not going to play for the rest of the year, at least until the, the real life pan, playoffs start instead of the fantasy playoffs. Yeah. Um, the, 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 how, where do you think that production gets picked up there in Pittsburgh? I'm thinking it goes to Ladarius Green, the tight end who's just coming off the IR. Uh, yeah. I mean, most likely. I mean, they they need help over there. Uh, they got they got to get their receiver core back together and more into it anyway. I yeah, because now at this point it's Antonio Brown and a bunch yeah, of other I mean, dudes. Yeah, last week against Dallas Terry's looks Haywood Bay? really bad. Is like really like, yeah. is he really your... I mean, but it's on it's on the quarterback. It's on Ben to get someone else that time and make someone a star. You know, there's a, I mean, everybody in the NFL is in the NFL for a reason. They all could play a little exactly. bit. Exactly, and Darius so, Hayward Bay is the next guy to step up. Yeah, so he, and, he, just, he just has to throw someone open, get them, you know, into their thing, get on the same page. And, you know, it's really about timing. I mean, of course, him and Brown got the best timing together. They've been playing, each other, you know, with right. each other. They can look at each other and think the same thing. But he got to get that to somebody else because they go a double Brown on the side. It's going to be the high safeties on top of right. him on every route. He got to find someone else to open that up. And he's still producing, which is kind of scary. Yeah, um, just not against Dallas. Well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but the, and that's the interesting thing, too, is uh, we're talking about Antonio Brown stuff. Uh, Big Ben had knee surgery a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I got hammered a couple weeks ago. I'm still hung over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, you know he's like, not, how amazing you know he's not 100%. It? Well, no, he's not 100%, but he's looking like he's healthy enough to play in the NFL, which uh, is the highest quality of football. Like, like, are we selling Big Ben short here? Is he one of the best of all time? He's able to do this surgery, come back I, I, at I, even 75%? I think he, I think he definitely like one of the toughest of all time. And he, definitely, he, he definitely one of them players that give you 110% every time he touched the field. You know, he, he, he's one of them guys that go play hurt. He's going to play down. You know, he's going to play sick if you have to. He's going to try to give his team the best to win. And, you know, just on that alone, you're winning. <laughs> you know, you're doing better than a lot of the other quarterbacks in the league. And plus, he got skill. You know, he's a tough dude, but still not 100%. You still see some of those throws are sort. I mean, it still didn't look the same. I mean, a lot of the routes is not matching up because of timing issues. There's a lot of things going on they got to fix. He's got to get right quick game. And this the defense. Week coming with but they still, the defense got to step it up, too. Well, that defense is so bad, that's why he's able to stay in those games thrown, you know, because there are shootouts yeah. almost every week, whoever yeah. they're playing. Um, and, and I think that that's one of, the, one of the reasons why he carries such a high fantasy value, in fact. Uh, but honestly, I think it's amazing that the dude had meniscus surgery a couple weeks ago, and he's already yeah. back playing. Yeah, he's back, and he's still looking good. That's the same 
thing with uh, the quarterback from Seattle. He's back and looking a little better and yeah. starting to throw a little better. And he was limping a couple of weeks ago, too. Right, right. So. Yeah, that's right. Russell Wilson's another one mm-hmm. of those guys. It's, uh, so, yeah. I mean, they tough. They want to play. They want to be in the so game. He's good since he got married, but still <laughs> at the same time. Uh, so, uh, before we get out of here, Jay, let's just switch some gears. Uh, as a Dodger fan, I want to personally give a shout out to Corey Seager, the National League Rookie of the Year this year. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a unanimous winner, which, uh, you know, you can't even say he's a first time winner, first time shortstop, because last year Chris Bryant won it. Um, but it, it, it's nice, especially when a Dodger wins the award, because it's actually referred to as the Jackie Robinson Award, uh, which we all know is the first African American player in a Major League Baseball. Yeah. Um, and, and it's amazing because he's the 17th Dodger to do this. Uh, he hit 308 this year, 26 home runs. Um, pretty amazing numbers. He's also in the conversation for MVP. Uh, it, it's interesting that you don't see a player that's a rookie come along and make this kind of impact too very often. The last time we saw it actually was last year when Chris Bryant came in. Look what he did for the Cubs in the World Series mm-hmm. this year. So there's still hope, Dodger fans, is what I'm saying. Especially yeah. since we got That's the always national, next year. Well, we got the National League Manager rookie or Manager of the Year too, who is our rookie manager, Dave uh, Roberts. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting enough, this might have been the worst job to ever have as a manager. Uh, he had 28 guys go on the DL this year at this point, and he also pitched tw- uh, 31 pitchers, mm-hmm. which combined with those 31 pitchers, he's, yeah, you guys are still in it. You this, know, and look hey, like you almost had the Cubs. So the staff had 1,510 Ks, which was a major league record for most ever for a pitching staff. Um, I just think it's interesting that this guy was basically handed a, a deck of cards, had half the deck of cards removed, and then still somehow was able to win. Yeah, uh, great that, manager. So imagine next year if everyone stayed healthy, they bring in right. you know, some help. Again, there's still hope, Dodger fans. Yeah. Um, I and, mean, they got they got a good team. At least you got beat by the the team that won it all. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so exactly. You did get beat by a shabby team. Right, right. And uh, on, on the American League side, Terry Francona for the Indians, he won manager American League Manager of the Year. Uh, that's his second time winning it, and uh, you can see what they did with that team there, and how mm-hmm. it went from being the laughing stock to being, you know, legitimate, per- perennial, perennially yeah, legitimate. one of the most legitimate teams in the American mm-hmm. League. Uh, also, Michael Fulmer, uh, American League Rookie of the Year, he was eleven and seven this year. Uh, but the biggest note was is he was the key piece that came over in the uh, Suspedes trade when he came over mm-hmm. to oh, Boston. I know that. So. Sometimes those trades work out for both teams, and you don't know it until a couple of years later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's our show for this week, everybody. My name is Jimmy Meniz. Jay Frieda. Uh, tune in to us next week. Uh, also find us on Facebook at Sports Talk on MyTV26. Uh, feel free to submit any questions, anything of the sort, uh, if you want to correspond with us, or even come and be a guest on the show, because uh, if you know about hockey, you know a lot more about hockey than we do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so well, once again, Jimmy Meniz. Jay Frieda. See you guys next week. Thanks a lot, everybody. I had no baseball inserts. <laughs> <laughs> like baseball, you talking about baseball? Yeah, man, it sounds good, man. Let's just move the table. Now we got one more. Yeah, you keep yours. Let me unplug mine. All right. Oh, we didn't talk about Romo. Yeah. <laughs>